Or they all hate more. Oh. It's the first so event. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than no questions. <laughs> All right, good afternoon. I'd like to welcome Stacy Lewis into the interview room today. Now, Stacy, 2014, I'm gonna list your accomplishments. Three wins, Rolex Player of the Year, Ver Trophy winner, Moneyless title. How do you top that? And what motivates you coming into this year now? What motivates me is the one thing you didn't say, which was six second place finishes last year. So that's what, that's what motivates me this year, that it could have been, last year could have been an unbelievable year. Um, it was good, but it could have been unbelievable. And so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a major this year. Um, but I think, you know, it's really it's just about trying to get better every day and making little changes here and there that, you know, hopefully they, they pay off in the long run. You talk about changes. What did you do this off season, and how did you spend your time? Um, I didn't. Well, normally I like to put the clubs away for a few weeks and just get rid of them. But, um, but I actually I couldn't this time because I was – having to make a golf ball change. And so um, the golf ball I was playing was, has come off the conforming list as of January 7th. So, um, so, now, so I had to find a new golf ball. So I tested, I think, about every golf ball in the market. Um, <laughs> so that's what I did most of December. And um, I, I've, I'm down to the bridge show now. So I'm going to play that for the next year or two. And, um, you know, I feel like it's a ball that is really going to help me. It's going to help my game a lot, um, help control with my wedges. That's where I really noticed a difference. So um, I'm excited about that. And from there, it was just kind of working on my golf swing. Um, things kind of the last half of last year got off track. And so we kind of, Joe and I, we went back to kind of what we've been working on, you know, maybe 2012, 2013, and kind of said, you know, what worked then, you know, and why isn't it working now? And so we're kind of going back to that stuff and getting the club a little bit more in front of me and um, feeling pretty good about it. Is there a certain point where you felt like things started to go off track? Um, you know, it wasn't one tournament specifically. It was just um, really after the U.S. Open, I don't think I played. I didn't play my best golf. And um, that was, you know, I, I had three wins in June last year. So, I mean, it could – what. You know, it's kind of you kind of kick yourself because of what could have been, and so it's um, I don't know. It wasn't one specific thing. It was just kind of the way it was, and I think I was working so hard to win those three awards at the end of last year that I got concerned in points and averages and points for CME and points for everything that I kind of lost track of what I do good, which is you know try to play good golf every day. And so I'm trying to just get back to the basics and go, go play some golf. Well, you, you do something well out here because there are a lot of players who speak very kindly of you, think highly of you, and look up to you out here. One player in particular was Jessica Corda in a recent <laughs> interview who said that she loves you because you're not afraid to be honest with people, even if it's uncomfortable. So how That's does that make true. you feel? <laughs> and what is your approach to the young players as you see them out here on the course? Um, well, I mean, that's that's just me. I mean, I'm honest with myself. I'm honest with the people around me. It's just, it's kind of my persona personality. I don't beat around the bush. Um, I'm going to tell you what I think. You're going to see what I think by my emotions. That's just me. It's just who I am. Um, but it, it's cool that, you know, I've, I've tried to do the right things and show these younger girls how how you can, you know, be successful and still help the tour and do other, have, have a life and do other things. And I'm just trying to do it the right way. And it's just cool that, you know, they're paying attention and they're watching. Perfect. Let's open it up for questions for Stacy. Uh, start with Beth Ann back there. Let's talk about the ball change. Just mm -hmm. how long did you use the same ball and, and how big of a deal is that for you in terms of feel and distance? And yeah. I am, um, well, I think my freshman year of college, I played a Nike ball. And then since then, I've been playing Titleist, a version of a Titleist. But um, specifically, I've been playing the 09X since 2009, basically. So since I turned pro, I've been playing the same golf ball. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd, it's not really that big of a change. Um, what it's, it's actually helped me a lot with the wedges is... Um, I've, whenever I have a wedge downwind with my old ball, um, we would always have to play the number because it would kind of get up and knuckle and go down. Where what I found with the Bridgestone is that it gets out there and actually carries further. So it's doing what it should do downwind instead of kind of knuckling and um, being a little bit unpredictable. So, um, you know, I didn't want to change. I 
I beg to be able to play the same ball. I've been, I've been begging them for the last three years to keep letting me play this ball. So um, I, I don't like change. I didn't want to do it, but I was kind of, I was a little bit forced into it. Um, but I think, I really think I found a good golf ball in Bridgestone and I'm excited about it. I think if there's going to be some adjustment with yardages and just, you know, certain shots, but just out there today with the wind, it just, um, it flew so much better. And um, so I just, just get used to seeing, seeing the ball fly a little differently is all. I can probably guess this, but of those six seconds, is there second place finishes? Is yeah. there one that that you harp on? Uh, I don't even know. I mean, the one that the one I think was the hardest was uh, San Francisco. Um, that's so. I mean, U.S. Open. I mean, I played really good to finish second, so that was that was kind of different. But um, the Lake Merced one was really tough, and, and that was at the end of a. I had a bunch of seconds prior to that, and so that one was really hard. Um, I played with some really good golf and got kind of clipped at the end, but um, but it wasn't like I felt where some of those seconds in the past had been maybe mental errors or I didn't trust what I was doing or something. It was it was kind of more out of it was something I did. I felt like these seconds weren't always you know something I did specifically, other than you know somebody just pulled off a shot. So. I mean, I, I don't know. I think there's room to improve. I think you can get better under pressure, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do because it's, it's one more putt. It's not anything major. It's just one more putt. Are you in the back? Hey, Stacy. Uh, how you doing today? Good. Good. Um, Michelle was in here earlier. Apparently, you guys are both uh, demons in the weight room uh, together. <laughs> Wow, um, she's but <laughs> she, she said you were. She said you she were. She said I was? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she's no, trying to keep up. <laughs> you're no stranger to hard work. And she is also mentioning about starting a clean slate in 2015 about your goals. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling that hat you're wearing right now and a date in Westchester mm -hmm. this summer is going to be one of your top goals for the season, the LPGA Championship. And mm -hmm. I read a really nice article by Beth Ann that they're also having a, a women's leadership summit and that's something that's very near and dear to your heart and then lastly mm -hmm. the guys are going to st andrews this year i want you to tell me how cool it felt to make birdie birdie on the old road hole in the last hole and win the open championship it's a lot of questions there yeah, sorry about that. um <laughs> uh well let's start the kpmg women's pga you know that was one thing last year that i was really proud of um i it was it was a long time in the works, and I think it's it's going to be such an unbelievable event. You know, I've been able to help behind the scenes. Um, you know, they've come to me and asked me, you know, what makes the U.S. Open so great? Why do the players love it? Why do the players love this tournament? You know, they want to know what makes each tournament good, and then they're going to put that in theirs. And I think it's it's I think it, one thing it's going to do is just showcase. It's going to showcase us. We're going to be on a great venue network TV, um, just so many good things are going to come out of it. And I think it's going to open a lot of doors um, because I think, you know, maybe other tournaments are going to see, wow, look what KPMG is doing. I think we need to step up and do this too. So that tournament is going to raise the bar for all of our other majors. I mean, you look at our purses across the board are going up, and I think it's because of that. You know, when other sponsors are going to start getting pushed around and pushed out if you know they don't step up and, and that's where we want to be we want to be competitive with that and that i think one of the coolest part of the tournaments is the leadership summit um and i get to i actually get to be on the advisory board which um i can't say who's on the board yet but they're announcing it very soon and it um it's an unbelievable list of women i will tell you that and just an opportunity for me um to to talk to these women, to be around them, to see what makes them the leaders that they are, um, is just going to be huge for me. And I, you know, we're going to have CEOs of top, you know, Fortune 500 companies attending our event, and you know, maybe they take what they saw at the KPMG tournament and take it back to their company and say, we need to get involved with the LPGA. And I think that's really one of the best things that's going to come out of that week. Um, and St. Andrews. Um, <laughs> I know, I yeah. remember yeah. that, right? Um, I don't think I'll ever be able to top that finish. Um, you know, I don't know how you go and win a major and top that. Uh, the five iron I hit into 17 was um, was unbelievable. I, you could probably go drop 50 balls and not do it again. 
Um, and then to make the putt on 18 with in the scene, all the people around, um, all my friends and family I had there, you know, it, it was, um, it was just one of those things. I don't think, I don't think I ever top it again. Okay. Uh, Stacy, the current state of the game of the LPGA is, just seems to be tremendous, mm -hmm. but the sport has always been star driven a little bit. Is this, is this, this group, your group? Can you take that star driven and, and push it up with all the players, you know, you, Michelle, NB, go down the list of, you know, a, a host of stars. Right. Is that good? Is it better to have one or is it better to have a bunch, I guess? Um, I think it's better to have a bunch. I think it's better to have a bunch of stars, a bunch of rivalries. I think, um, because I think that makes the players better. I think when somebody comes out and dominates, you kind of see that person as, way above you and there's no way I could ever get to that level. Um, but if there's somebody that's just a little bit of a heavy ahead of you, you're like, wow, I need to get to work because I can I can go beat them. Um, so I think the rivalries are great. You know, it helps, you know, in, in some aspects, it takes some pressure off of that top person to not have to be the one answering the questions and doing everything every single week. You know, you're able to kind of spread the wealth and create more stars. I mean, I think we've we've been able to do that, you know, we got myself, MB, Michelle, and Lydia. You know, we're kind of sharing the wealth there, and we're making each other better. You know, that's that's the biggest thing about it is that you know you see the way MB putts, or you see the shots that Michelle can hit. You're like, gosh, I I need to get to work. You know, I see her in the gym, and there's at the speed that she's getting. I mean, she's getting stronger. She's um, she's gonna be able to hold the hold some positions better in her golf swing, and she's gonna be able to hit more unbelievable shots than she already does, you know? And so that makes me wanna go get to work. And that's, that's what rivalry, rivalries do, and that's why we need them. This is kind of on that. Could you talk mm -hmm. specifically about your rivalry with MB? And, and also, could you talk about the growth you've seen Michelle make in the last couple of years? Yeah, I mean, I think MB and I, I don't think we quite had a rivalry until Taiwan last year, because that was really the first time the two of us had gone head to head, same tournament. Um, we were in the same groups the last couple of days. And it was it was really cool, you know? I mean, I think, I don't know, it's, it's crazy to think over the last, I guess, three years, we've traded player of the year, bear trophy, um, what else, money list. We trade, I think between the two of us, we won all the awards basically the last two years. And it's, it's really kind of crazy to think of because it's hard, enough to, it's hard enough to win one tournament to let alone do that stuff back and forth. But I enjoy it. You know, MB's a great player. She's great to play with. Um, she makes me better. You know, that, that's the big thing is I want to play against the best when they're playing their best and that, because that's going to make me better. Um, and Michelle... I think the biggest thing for Michelle is just she's grown in her confidence and um, just her ability to just kind of take control of, of her life and her game. You know, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing somebody that knows how to practice, that knows how to prepare, knows what she needs to do in her off weeks, you know, knows when she needs to shut it down and go to the beach and hang out with her friends. You know, she's learning how to take control of her life. And, um, and that's what you're seeing on the on the course. You're seeing a happy kid going out there that's super talented, that hasn't played her best golf. Um, and I'm excited to see what she does because I think she's going to raise the bar um, even higher the next couple of years. Good. Okay, over here on the right. Hi, Stacy. Can you tell us what you think about the Golden Ocala course, kind of what um, areas you're going to have to really concentrate on when you're out there and kind of you know where you'll be able to take it a little easy? Yeah, this golf course, um, I think the best word that I, th that I could come up with was just tricky. Um, it's, it's obviously very long and very wet right now. Hopefully it dries out a little bit. But um, the way they've got it set up, it's going to play really long. And uh, I think a good ball striker is going to play well. Just, um, just you know, playing off of some wet conditions, some the burned out, you know, the dormant grass, chipping off of that stuff is going to be kind of difficult. So... Um, I think good ball strikers will play well, um, but it, you know, if they move some tees up and kind of play play the course more the way it should be played, I think I think you can shoot a score out there. I mean, the greens are relatively soft, um, so you can get some wedges in there pretty close. So of the okay. replica holes, I know you've played at least one of the courses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Thoughts on uh, the 17th here? Yeah, what have you played? You played Augusta, played Augusta too? I played Augusta, yeah. Okay. So thoughts um, on the replica holes, especially 17? Um, the Augusta replica holes, actually, I think, are the closest. Um, like, uh, I think 12's, or it's the 11th hole, but 12 at Augusta, you know, that one's actually... That one's actually pretty similar, other than you're hitting nine iron at Augusta and I hit four iron, or five iron today. So <laughs> not quite hitting the same club in there. I'd like to see the guys do that, right? Um, but the next hole, uh, 12, which is 13 at Augusta, that one's, it's pretty similar. The green's not, you know, not quite the same. Yeah, that's what, the layout, the general layout of the holes are similar, but the green complexes aren't quite the same. These are a little bit more, um, severe than, like, say, the ones at St. Andrews, the uh, the first hole that they have here, the green's tilted pretty good, where that one at St. Andrews is pretty flat. So, um, you know, there's some differences, but they're close. Um, 17, 17, it's, if they move the tee box a little bit more to the right, so you're actually hitting more over the wall of the tee, um, you'd have more of the, ang the actual angle at St. Andrews. And then you build a little hotel there, too, so you can hit over that. Um, and then the green is, the green complex is really isn't the same. You know, it, it's pretty big. The green at St. Andrews is tiny. <laughs> it's maybe a third of the size of that green. So um, there's some similarities, though. I think you can pick it up. Um, I think the postage stamp hole, I haven't played, yeah, the real one. But that, I think that's a really cool hole. It's kind of a cool setting out there. Um, you know, I, it's a cool concept. You know, I've played Tour 18 in Houston, which has the replica holes as well. Um, the only thing is it doesn't do it. There's not a whole lot of flow to the golf course just because you're playing a Lynx course and then you're playing Augusta and then you're playing. So it, there's not quite a lot of flow to it. Um, but um, but it's interesting. It's it's cool. What do you hit on um, I hit... I hit like I had hybrid today to the middle of the green. So we're playing it. I mean, we're playing it at 420 and not getting any roll. So if you know, you got to move the tee up a little bit. So they do have the little mound in the fairway. That's the little kicker. That's but we're not quite getting it to that point. So <laughs> so if they move the tee up a little bit, you get the kicker down there and have a five or six iron like you would at St. Andrews. All right, any other questions for Stacy? All right, Stacy, cool. thank you for coming in. Thank you.